and I will pass it over to you, Mike. All right. Thank you, everybody. So well, I was up late last night thinking about what to say during this presentation. It might have technically been this morning, but uh, anyway, I thought that what I might do is just tell you about some of the hard work that my colleagues have done so that you could associate their efforts with my face and um, I could take credit that way. Uh, there are a number of things that we have access to and they're very well known to those of us who are denizens in the library, but I think they're very uh, undiscovered relatively out there in the wider world. So I wanted to take a few minutes and we could probably even wrap before the 15. It could be like nine in 15 or something like that. But anyway, um, I begin as I so often do with the library's website. And uh, you of course know you can ask us you know, about any of these sorts of things contacting us through here, but I'm gonna jump into this library databases link here and if you're watching this recording or if you're watching it live, there is a PDF that's distributed. Thank you, Martha, uh, for reminding me about that this morning um, that just quickly has some summative information and some helpful links to get to, to some of these things. So I don't think a lot of people know about these resources. One that I wanted to point out was the uh, video collection that we have, Academic Video Online. Now I tell classes that libraries are really, really bad at coming up with snappy marketing titles for things. So it's really just like a, an overly long and exhaustively descriptive title of something. So what do we have? We have academic video online, uh, you know, obviously organized alphabetically. It's early up in the list, but I, I don't think anybody really is aware of this, save for maybe a handful of film studies folks and and maybe a couple of historians, but it's really wonderful to know about. There's over 89,000 videos here with public performance rights, meaning that you can watch these in your classes. You can invite people to uh, have a public exhibition of these things, which is no small thing if you know about copyright. The only thing you can't do is charge admission. So there's that. You can't be profiting off of library subscriptions. Uh, and if you do, don't tell us about it. Uh, you can stream, link, and embed these in Canvas. So if you wanted to assign things, you could make it very easy embedding it in your Canvas course. Uh, I'm just going to just pick out something randomly here. Uh, so you've got, let me look at collections. A lot of people are interested, you know, channels. If you, people, some people love the PBS content that, that is streamed. Uh, let me just open up any old thing and uh, we'll go into documentaries. We'll see what comes up here. I'm just going to pick something that illustrates how you can view, stream, embed, and share all of this stuff. So I'm just going to pause this because I don't want to actually watch it. Um, but you have this share button here. You 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 can see what I'm sharing, right? I've, I've shared the, the right window. Good. Thank you. I'm sure you would have told me if not. So you've got a permalink here to get back to this. You can link your students you can put this in your syllabus in Canvas. Um, you can embed, which is a really cool thing. And uh, so it's like the YouTube embed capability. But these are things that are only accessible through the library because we pay for them. Uh, I don't pay for them. Alice pays for them. And um, so thank you, Alice. Uh, and yeah, so they span every academic discipline you could imagine with a special evidence. evidence um, Emphasis on history, business, anthropology, education, media studies, and everything else is represented, uh, just not as well as those. Um, so that's the uh, the video collection that we have, academic video online. Then, also relatively undiscovered is uh, under E here this ebook academic collection. Over 237,000 ebooks regularly curated by librarians. So now you know why there are black circles under my eyes. And these are all unlimited in access. So think about how revolutionary that is compared to any of the print books in our collection, right? You've got um, nearly a quarter of a million titles 
that anyone of our students, faculty or staff can read simultaneously. There's no limit. Everyone in a single class can look at it all at the same time. Great for collaboration, great for assigning. Uh, you could, they could replace textbooks. I'm just gonna click on eBooks here where you would probably search and find to see if a book you're looking for is contained in that collection. I'm just gonna, I already have clicked on it and it didn't load. So I'm gonna click on it again and yammer to solve for time while uh, these things come in. So you've got, again, spanning every academic discipline, there's a ton on business, economics, education, really everything else. And um, a fabulous amount of eBooks, which you also can embed, link in your Canvas courses or anywhere else. And I did say, but it's worth repeating, they are unlimited. Uh, anyone and everyone can look at these all at the same time. So that is a vast collection of eBooks. And uh, I looked at the video collection that we also have. But even as vast as those are, there are probably some videos or eBooks, textbooks, and other things that you might be interested in, either in their entirety or in portions that you would like your students to take advantage of. And a lot of faculty have done this, but many probably don't realize that they can and should, is just to reach out to a librarian. And you can see our names listed here with our subject disciplines here. We can find out what is the most affordable, suitable way of getting access to the resource you want for your students in the duration you're looking for, in the amount that you're looking for. Um, there are a lot of ins and outs to it, and to it, and we would certainly ask you what your needs are, whether you want to use something for one semester, or if you're going to plan on using it for the foreseeable future, if you need, say, just one chapter of a book or the entire thing, uh, is it something you're going to assign as a textbook primarily, or is it something supplementary? So we would work out the, the appropriate package, the, the right licensing so that everything is nice and legal and it's paid for and uh, provided to your students and to you in the amount uh, needed. So, so just get in touch with us and we can find the right, the right recipe for your needs. Uh, in addition to that, you are encouraged to request materials uh, on reserve. So you can see here course reserves. We have the ability to place uh, materials on electronic reserve or physical reserve. So maybe buying the thing, buying the book or the video or whatnot is not the appropriate thing for you. You just want us to have it on hand for convenient access by your students, whether it be electronically or in physical copy. There are um, ways to do that. You can fill out one of these forms. These are all accessible from the For Faculty section of the library's website. And again, it's just a matter of requesting and starting that dialogue with your librarian. These things are very, very cost effective and we're happy to, to provide these things uh, for your students. Uh, and I'll show you how that looks to your students just by going back to the library's website and clicking here where it says course reserve. If I use an example, now you can see we have over 153 courses and um, most of these are uh, courses that the instructors have requested us place materials on reserve for. Many of them are directions courses. And uh, Kristen Wixon did a great job working with one of our folks in the library, Mike Cosma. And uh, I did virtually nothing to advance this project whatsoever. But if you were to search for a professor's name or an instructor, you can find what has been placed on reserve. Um, a great example is this. CJ3110, Youth and Crime. And uh, this is a mix of print books, which students can request, read the portion they need, they return it, it's ready for the next person to, to request. Um, and in some cases, it's both in print and it's an ebook. And this ties back into that ebook collection. Um, this may be one that we purchased individually because the faculty member requested it. So the number one thing is to start that dialogue and we can fulfill the best means of uh, providing that. So all the resources for your teaching and research needs, 
We want to be the ones helping facilitate that and to save you money. So uh, to summarize, if I can find my cursor, uh, we looked at course reserves, how you can initiate that conversation. We looked at the library databases where we have the uh, academic video online. We have the ebook academic collection. And last thing, that which I didn't mention, was um, this newspaper package. A lot of faculty ask us if we have access to that recent article that was published in the New York Times because the faculty member has a subscription to NewYorkTimes.com. They told their students to read it, but their students are hitting a paywall and they can't all get the article. Well, um, those most recent articles from the New York Times and several other prominent national papers are available here. It's simply a matter of often pasting the title in and getting a link and you can paste that in your course. Everyone can read it, no paywall, no cost, and um, it fulfills that teaching need. So that's um, a handful of the hidden gems that are easy to discover, but I think a lot of people don't know about them. So I'm gonna unshare my screen if I can figure out how to do that. And there it is, it's a red button at the top. Um, so with that, I will wrap up my remarks early and um, I will take your questions if you have them. I'm gonna look at this chat and thank you all for coming. Maybe you're eating your lunch. Maybe you want to go eat it now. But what have you got? Any questions? Yeah, we have a few minutes left. If there are any questions or other comments people want to make. Um, otherwise, we'll we'll stop the recording and Mike will be around maybe for a minute or two to, uh, to chat with people. Well, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.